Hi, one best PR videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is our daily pitching preview show with that uh, we do with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Right now, we're going to take a look at the pitching assignments for Sunday, April 26th. Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Thanks for being back with us. Thank you for having me, Peter Loshak. All right, Sunday. This is going to be an interesting day. You know, we always talk about the pitchers that I think are interesting. Sometimes they're uh, they're pitchers that are doing awesome, and uh, and we talk about them today. I have five pitchers circled, all of them that I'm expecting to get crushed. So we might see some fireworks on Sunday. Maybe people like to bet the grand salami in baseball. The over might be a good play there. Before we get to it, Joe Duffy, tell us what you do at OffshoreInsiders.com during baseball season. Uh, we win, and I've been doing it since 1988. Midway through the 1988 baseball season is when I. I made my debut actually a little yeah midway through uh J july what was it no june 1st of 1988 was when i made my debut and the score phone's been winning ever since okay joe Duffy from offshoreinsiders.com five pitchers i've identified here who are going to be in danger of getting crushed i think i'll just run down them in chronological order the first one jason marquis at home against the Cubs. You know, his last start, he did get hit again, as we, uh, as I sort of uh, suggested might happen. He did have kind of a good uh, strikeout to walk ratio, but when he got hit, he got hit hard. And this just looks like another situation where he's going to be in trouble. The Cubs have live bats in their lineup. He's pitching at home in Cincinnati. Just doesn't seem like he has much. Probably not going to be a starter for that much longer. Jason Marquis is going to get hit, right? Well, Mark, he's been around a, a long time, so he might find a way to hold on. But you're right, he's given up 21 hits in 15 innings. We talk about whip. Certainly when you're giving up more than, well, more than a hit in inning, that's not very good. And Travis Wood has pitched well against his former team, 2.69 ERA against Cincinnati. So you're probably right, a good chance to fade Marquis. Okay, next guy, Bud Norris. Oh, my God, right? 17.42 ERA so far to be exact, going to be at home. Baltimore is uh, nice for hitters facing Boston. Big lineup there. Oh, my God. Is, is there any reason to expect Bud Norris to have, like, a six-inning, three-earned run start here, or is he going to get chased and crushed once again? Well, as we know, Boston probably has the, the so certainly some of the best bats in Major League Baseball on paper. And Bud Norris, yeah, that might be one of those things where you want to go with uh, Boston – in the five run or the the five inning line because uh, yeah Boston should be able to crush Norris very early and often. And then Mike Fires again the St. Louis Milwaukee series. I'm seeing St. Louis was probably going to have a big edge and Fires. You know uh, it's been reported that um, he's his his velocity is a little bit down. His first three starts have been bad. His ERA is way up there. He's just getting hit. St. Louis has some quality bats in their lineup. Uh, I think we expect another start where Fires gets hit and uh, St. Louis to put up some runs. Right, Joe. That would seem to be the case. Uh, it, it is a, a case of some of the better bats in the National League against a pitcher who has been struggling. So it, it almost seems too easy, but it's, it's tough to not uh, fade Milwaukee here. The only problem is you're going to be still laying a, a pretty good number on the road. Yeah, maybe not a huge number, though. And then you know what's coming, right? Tim Linscombe on yeah. the road at Colorado. He, he had a decent start in his last game and actually a fade of him lost, which, it, which happened to me. At Colorado, Linscombe's going to get lit up, right? What I'm going to do is, much like last year, wait until Linscombe does get lit up and then fade him. I don't know if I'm ready to fade him here. He's been pitching very well. He has an ERA of two in the, his three starts, 18 innings pitch. And we met, I, I think I alluded to him the last time he pitched. I, I recall, and I have to look it up, but I recall last year him going on about a five-game stretch where he found that fountain of youth and he had a ridiculous ERA and uh, whip, and, and he was unconscious. So Lincecum, even in his old age, has been a little streaky. Will I fade Lincecum before the year's out? I think I definitely will. But to be honest with you, if anything, I might stay away from him, hope that he continues to pitch well, and then once his value goes up there, then start going against him. And then the last one, Jeremy Hellickson, right at home against a solid Pittsburgh lineup. Hellickson having some issues was never a, that. He showed promise at times for sure, but looking a little shaky to start this year. I'm not sure I'm, a, I'm buying into him right now. Maybe later in the year he'll make, he'll make some adjustments and turn it around. Right now looking kind of shaky to me at home against a solid lineup. Uh, Hellickson probably, uh, probably vulnerable this start as well, right? And uh, he's going against a pretty good pitcher in Lariano. Unfortunately, the, of the Pittsburgh regulars, only two guys have had any at-bats against Hellickson, so there's not really 
much to say as far as, as how he's done against uh, the batters that he'll be facing. But at this point, Hellickson looks like a pitcher to fade, that's for sure. All right, but you would agree with me that of the vo- out of the five pitchers that I mentioned, uh, probably at least three or four of them get lit up, and that if you bet, like, you know, the team totals overs of the teams going against them, you're probably going to come out ahead, right, Joe? I don't, th- uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really ready to fade Lincecum as of yet, but that's about the only one that I have a vociferous disagreement with you. And even then, it's not that vociferous. I, right. I agree that Lincecum is about to get lit up, but I don't, I want to wait until... Uh, he starts giving up some runs, and then I'm ready to fade him. Well, that's all I wanted to bring up from the Sunday card. What else would you like to discuss with us, Joe, that might point us towards bet- likely vetting value? Again, like what we need to know here is, um, you know, push us in the right direction here, Joe. We know who's been doing well. We know who's been doing poorly. We need to, like, think about, start thinking about possible betting value one way or another, Joe. Well, Chris Archer, he's been unconscious. It might be a time to continue to uh, to ride him. 1.07 ERA and 25 innings pitch. No, no earned runs, and especially lately, his last three, he's been unconscious. So he might be somebody to uh, go with. And uh, Iwakawa, Iwakuma for uh, Seattle, he's been struggling, and um, probably a good time to fade him. Okay, Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Thanks so much for all your thoughts. We'll talk to you again on Monday.